Welcome to our scenario-based flight using Garmin Pilot. In this video, we provide an example of how Garmin Pilot is used while conducting a flight from Anoka County Blaine Airport in Minneapolis, K-A-N-E, to Austin Bergstrom International, K-A-U-S. You'll see how a number of features are employed to manage the flight and add to situational awareness. In this scenario, we've been assigned a flight to bring the president of the company to Austin, Texas for a two-week vacation. This creates a relatively light load, so we can take on more fuel than is required, allowing for unforeseen delays while en route. To begin planning, we open the Garmin Pilot application and select the flight plan icon on the tab bar. Then, we select Add Origin Airport and type in the letters K and A and see our departure airport appear at the top of the list. So we select that. Next, we select Add Destination Airport and type in KAUS and see our destination airport showing in the list. So again, we select it. With both the origin and destination airports entered, we select the routing feature and with the popular tab selected, we see a route that is used 50% of the time by ATC. With the high likelihood that this route will be approved by ATC without modifications, we select it and then select the departure runway. Based on the winds in the area, we select runway 27 and then see the route inserted into the flight plan. We then slide the tab over from the right to observe the planned route on the map. Since the route looks reasonable, we slide the map closed. The blue briefcase with the green check mark indicates that our route data and charts are downloaded. So we select the nav log icon to view our fuel remaining at various waypoints. And between that information and the required fuel indication showing along the bottom line, it appears that we should be good as long as we start with full tanks. We ensure that the departure date and time are correct. And then select the altitude button to see if there is an altitude, based on winds and fuel burn rates, that offers a better solution. It looks like flight level 300 is the best choice for reducing fuel burn. Next, we select Create Trip and review entries on the Form tab. The departure date and time are correct, and it looks like we can expect an hour of fuel at the destination, which meets FAA regulations and company standards for this flight. Here we enter the number of persons on board. Since we've already reviewed the nav log, we select the Brief tab to obtain the briefing information and then expand all to review that information. With the briefing accomplished, we select the W and B tab where we see a caution triangle showing. Since we haven't entered our loading information yet, we select Edit Load Sheet and enter weights for the pilot and co-pilot seats that will be occupied. Selecting the fuel load numbers, a fuel load window opens where we can use a slider to adjust the fuel load or select from the quick set fuel list to load to those levels. We decide on full tanks and leave the slider as is. Now we touch the word done in the upper right part of the page. With all planning accomplished, we select the file button in the header and see the acknowledgement that ATC has received the filing. Selecting the Charts icon on the tab bar, we can see the chart packages that have been downloaded for us. First, we review the Orski 2 departure procedure, and the associated narrative.
and then look at the Blue 4 arrival into Austin. Here we see an altitude that has been noted for vertical planning of 13,000 feet at Suzy. We then select the Austin Airport diagram to determine where FBO parking is located. We make a note to ask for runway 17 left or 35 right for landing to reduce our taxi time after landing. Our clearance is for as filed, so we set up the onboard avionics for the departure. As we prepare for taxi, we zoom the navigation map display in to see our position on the airport surface and brief the taxi instructions of Foxtrot Bravo 1, Bravo, cross runway 36 to runway 27. With ADSB in, we can observe other traffic in the area, including on the surface. After conducting our before takeoff flow and checklist, we select the arrow on the right side of the screen, select the down arrow on the departure procedure line, and pinch the navigation map to range the view out to a level where we can observe the first several waypoints. After takeoff and with the aircraft cleaned up, we are given a clearance of direct journey. To make this change in our flight plan, we touch the journey waypoint and scroll down to select direct to, which makes the leg to that waypoint active. Passing journey, we are cleared to our filed altitude of flight level 300, at which point we range the map view out to declutter the screen. Note the expanding glide range ring that appears around the aircraft, with winds and terrain elevation taken into consideration. Having the glide range ring showing makes the selection of an airport during an engine out diversion much easier. When en route, we select a variety of weather overlays to maintain a high level of situational awareness concerning weather along the route, while keeping an especially close eye on winds aloft. While we planned adequate fuel for the trip, we know that things can change during the flight and we continue to compare expected fuel levels at flight plan waypoints. When about 250 nautical miles prior to the start of the arrival procedure at Windu, we select charts for viewing in the split screen pane and select the blue 4 procedure chart. We don't expect to see our aircraft's position on this chart since it's not to scale. Once we have the procedure fresh in mind, we close the split screen view. Then we touch the destination airport on the map view to bring up the radial menu. Select the airport icon and determine that the winds are calm at Austin. While we could expect a visual approach into Austin, we decide to ask for the runway 17 left ILS approach. To brief that approach and to provide for monitoring our position on the approach, we open the destination chart package and select the ILS runway 17 left approach chart. We then adjust the image to fit the width for easier viewing and conduct the approach briefing. To load the approach into the flight plan, we select to show the flight plan in the split screen view. Select the procedures button on the destination airport header. Touch select approach and select ILS 17 left with the initial approach fix of DOFS. For now, we select load approach, which places the approach at the end of the flight plan. When we receive clearance for the approach, we touch the procedures button again, and this time select Activate Approach. And we see the active leg now going to DOFS, the initial approach fix. We then select the approach chart for viewing in split screen. Upon landing, and as we slow down, we see the airport diagram appear automatically, providing us a tool to improve our situational awareness as we taxi to parking. Now that you've seen Garmin Pilot in use, 
being employed to plan, file, and fly, it's time to take a look at abnormals that may occur when using the EFB. And then we'll discuss limitations associated with use of the application.